Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to present to you a letter that I wrote in 1991, almost 23 years ago, in post-abortion counseling. Esther, my daughter, I believe that you know me, so I know that you know that I have written countless hundreds of letters over my 44 years, but never to you. Dare I come to you now? Is it ever too late? I feel you have forgiven me and are grateful that I have finally faced the act that claimed your life, because now we can be truly connected. I acknowledge and bow in humility to the sacrifice that you have committed to. Did you know, prior to your implantation in my womb, that you would never see the Earth's blue sky nor the brilliant yellow of a daisy center? Did you know that you would not be comforted by your mother's arms nor share in the joys and struggles of our mutual lives? What did you know so long before I knew anything? I have only actively missed you for two years, having lived in denial for over 23. But I have packed decades of longing for you into two years. Esther, it is embarrassing to me that I have not tenaciously clung to life and that the prospect of longevity has held so little appeal to me. But perhaps you also know that 20 years of mental illness created in me a fierce drive for suicide. Was it you who prayed prayers for my survival? Well, if so, as you can see, they have worked. I know now that if God creates a life, he has a purpose for that life. It was a slap in God's face that I suffered over how I would provide for you. If I had really known God, I would have known that he had the answers for both of us. But I did not know that God when I decided to end your life. All I knew was that I had term papers due, tests to study for, and a long-range life agenda that did not include a baby at 19 years of age. Dare I believe that you are really well and happy and that we shall laugh someday together and play among the stars? Yes, I do dare. And I hold to the dream in the hope that it is a promise. How does one apologize for so great a commitment of sin and selfishness? Words are powerful and incisive, but there are no words that begin to encompass the enormity of my pain in denying us each other. But denying you an earth life, I denied myself the beauty, sorrow, nurturance, sacrifice, and facets of character that develop through motherhood. But now, perhaps as we move forward, we will be able to have a shared life of sensing and intuiting each other. Come to me in dreams if it pleases you, Esther. I will receive you. And no matter the swift end of a shared earth life, I will always be your mother. You will always be my daughter. I am so grateful to God that he cares for you now. I love you. I love you. Good job.